Keeping an historic wooden boat like a 120-year-old Bessie Ellen ship shape requires near constant maintenance and repair work. Much of the heavy duty tasks are tackled throughout the winter season, but there's always plenty of jobs cropping up throughout the summer sailing season too. And today it's fixing a deck leak using the traditional method of caulking. Um, so there's always something to do on a wooden boat. And um, today we've had, um, we've arrived in Troon in Scotland and unbelievably we had some wet weather on the trip up and poor Steve had a really wet bunk, um, usually caused by deck leak. So today I'm going to just talk about fixing deck leaks. Um, I'm going to uh, do some caulking. Here we have our caulking irons and you can see they're bent because I'm going to be caulking underneath the hatch. So they're, uh, they've got a little crank in them and then we're going to cork underneath the steel hatch and we set it in with the sharp one. You can see the profile on this one. So the series of loops is um, set in with the making iron. Yeah, so that first series of loops on that one. And then I um, check the width of the seam so that we can set it in, um, hardening it up. That one you can see is too thick for this seam. As you see, it just sits on the surface there. Here, this one here, um, that one does fit in the seam quite nicely. So the difference is for, for different size seaming seams. This one's too fat, but it might do further along here, but this one seems ideal. And you can see that with the bend in the um, shank there, it just puts it out so that when you hit it with your mallet, it's not straight down and underneath the, the hatch edge. Um, I'm going to be putting in oakum. And if this was smell it would be great because it smells divine, I think so anyway. It's sort of coated in linseed oil, Stockholm tar. Um, and it is the traditional method. I've also got here, sort of for, for smaller decks and smaller seams, we've got cotton and often you can put cotton um, in, when you're making a new deck, you'd put cotton in first and then you'd cork it up with a layer of oakum on the top. And then Owen will be doing the pitching later. So he's just boiling up the pitch now. Um, I'm just teasing this strand out because it is, is quite thick for a deck. Um, so you can, I, you can tease it out like this and then roll it. I've been doing this for years. It was my first job on my first wooden boat, sitting in the dry dock in Australia. I remember all those years ago on Anna Rosa. And then you just roll it on your thigh. It's a bit like tobacco. <laughs> just rolling it one way so you get a one way twist, if you see what I mean. My jeans are too clean, you need quite a good... And it's actually what we do with to the outside of the hull as well. Um, using the oakum and the same method. So yeah, we're gonna... Oh. We can do our best to see if we can reduce the amount of deck leaks. It's only this one and I was saying to the others, I think a lot of this, um, there's a leak here and a leak on the other side. And I wondered if the, the weight of all the masts on the deck, um, when we laid them down, might have caused it um, to, to come out of Gloucester. Just the fact that there was weight loads in areas of the boat that there aren't usually, if you see what I mean. Anyway, we found it. So um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a look. Um, you might want to have a look here. The, the size of the seam we're doing. So I've raked it out for you. So it's all nice and clean. We've taken out the pitch uh, and I've taken out the wet oakum, which is the old one. Um, and I'm just cleaning it up, raking out. 
and you can see here that I've actually got quite a big hole. So that, that much of the blade goes in, um, which means there's nothing in here at all. So I'm going to put a run in. Um, I'm going to put a quick run in. So yeah, we're going to start by setting it in with this one. This is where you decide you're too old. You, nothing works anymore. So you, now you can see why we need the crank, because if it was upright, I'd be hitting, do you see what I mean? If I was hitting uh, the straighter irons that were in the seam, it would be well underneath where my hammer's falling. But with these crank irons, they're bent enough so we can work slightly. So pushing it up, giving it a good th whack but not too hard you got to be quite careful about corking decks um, because you can move the planks so much um, on the exterior the harder you hit it the better but decks you need to be a bit kinder So I'm just putting, you can see, um, I'm just putting a series of loops or bites and tapping them in, packing them up together type thing. And I can sort of gauge how much, um, how much I need to put in by the depth, which I can feel on the edge of my crank so you push the loop in and then just give it a tap down sort of overlapping your iron should take and overlap the last loop that you put in whoops that's a bit of a join there And again, I'm putting a bit less in here because the seam isn't very deep and um, we need to drive the um, corking in. The general rule of thumb is that you set in the oakum to as deep as the seam is wide so that you allow plenty of room for the pitch to sit on top. Um, if the corking is too close to the surface, you don't get a good layer of pitch, if you see what I mean. So, um, yeah. But... Spent many hours watching shipwrights do this. So we want to drive it in, and every time I, I can feel how deep it's going, just by the feeling on the iron. So now I'm getting to the very deep bit. As it gets deeper, I can sort of grow the size of my loops they'll go right in you can see how that big loop has disappeared as I've tapped it in
So I've got to the end of where I want to cork. I'm going to leave my iron in and I'm going to just, instead of just cutting it, we just tease the end so we get a nice, you know, a tapered end that we can then cork in when we finish. So now then, I've set the oakum in and we're going to go back over this the whole way and driving it in. So down into the seam. So a bit firmer. Just letting the hammer drop down with only, I mean, the only force I've got is what's, I'm not putting it in with my shoulder, I'm just putting it in with the drop of my wrist. So basically driving all the loops down and back packing them in tight on themselves. You know, it's quite a good depth and I still haven't finished. So we've got it in that deep. Um, yeah, it's that deep so far and I haven't even hardened it up. So at the moment we're just driving these loops in. It's just awkward under here. I probably hit my hand and it hurt. Ah, it does hurt like hell. I have broken my knuckles, which is why you generally hold the iron like this. And then you don't. Oh, fuck. Not the tidiest, but I could do with even more bend in my irons. So that's back to the first loop that we put in. Now then, so we finished with the first iron and now we're going to use this one, just slightly wider. But it fits in there nicely, whereas this one, although it's thicker, just doesn't fit in. And it would force, um, you know, you're in danger of splitting the deck or splintering the wood. So I'm gonna start back to where I finished and drive, I'm always working this way now. So you set in going one way and then you harden up going the other way. I think. But I'm no specialist. Hopefully, if Steve ever comes back, he'll have a dry bunk. But you can see that's still going in quite deep in some places. And no, I haven't got a proper corking mallet. This is it, it's a wooden hammer, but it's um. I should have a proper corking mallet, but it's again a little bit too long for this job and I find that I kept hitting the hatch for the um,
So if you look in there now, you can see um, that we've packed it all and it looks quite tidy. Um, and you can see the layer of the filling that we've got in there and I've sort of packed it down into quite a hard, you know, if I take that iron, you know, that is quite firm. Um, I'm just going to see, there's a bit there that's quite deep and I thought it was quite deep at that end as well. So I could put a little thin run in. If, if your oakum's too thick, you're just forcing the ship wider. Particularly good for it, but yeah, every old lady leaks a little bit, so I don't blame her. <laughs> so yeah, just halving, halving the size. Pop in a little bit more. Slightly out of practice. Drive all the loops now in below the top of the seam. Maybe I don't put too much in, but I don't think so. Ow! Oh. Yep. You get your iron for one bit. <laughs> go you can see in there it's all nicely packed down um, I'm just going to uh, tail this bit off too just rake out a little bit more off. tuck my tails in and again yeah you can see that it's a nice sunny day this is not the sort of job you want you can do in the rain Oakum does not like getting wet at all. There we go. And it's tucked in. Yeah. 
so you can see that it's all really tucked quite neatly in its little bed and that should be quite level I wouldn't say I've done this bit particularly well I'll just tuck that bit in there a bit on the corner you wanting me to break anything um maybe maybe there was one over the stereo as well okay if you pinpoint that we'll have a look at it So this is, I mean, it's a really ancient method of um, making ships watertight. And um, this is the bit that makes the ship not leak. The pitch is only the sort of waterproofing over the top. So yeah, you can't just pour pitch into the planks and hope for the best. This is the bit that's uh, keeping the water out. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, I do need the, um, Sorry, Owen, can you bring the gas burner? Owen? Uh, oh, you can bring me the gas burner, could you? Uh, gas burner. Yeah, it's in the household <laughs> box. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Is that That's right. Just burning off the old, just a few of the, the ends. Yeah. Just the fine hairy tails gone. Hairy tails? Hairy. The shipyard at T. Nielsen. So normally we'd pitch the deck and then have to scrape everything off. But I think I think Charlie told me that on HMS Victory they weren't allowed to make a mess. So Keeping it in the tradition of how it was, we will try and follow their example. So we're taping up, this one's slightly awkward because it's on the angle. So we're going to tape it up. It's hell of a mess when you don't tape it because you, you, there's really no way that you can pour it in perfectly. So now we're going to go in with the pitch. So yes, we do have a use for your old Arga kettles.
don't need to stir it, please. Oh no, I wasn't stirring it, I was using the edge. Owen, can I have the kettle back? Yep. Just on the deck. On the deck. You don't want to get this on you. Doesn't help with a little bit of wind blowing either. Right, I'm just going to top up this seam here. see the masking tape really it halves the mess because when you scrape cold pitch it just shatters and goes everywhere and of course it puts it like tiny specks of it everywhere it gets on your shoes it gets in your bed it gets in your hair so this is a fantastic method I'm very happy to have learnt this one from Charlie and Robbie there you go hopefully Steve will now have a dry bunk We need to take this up, Owen. Yeah. That needs repitching. 